Everyone who's applying to med school is doing research. Everyone is volunteering. Everyone is shadowing and everyone's doing well on their schoolwork. And simultaneously, everyone's telling you to stand out on your application. But the question is, how do you stand out? This is especially for my 2025 applicants. I'm gonna break down the ways that you can take what you've already done thus far and make it sound really good on your application so that you can actually move the needle. And if you are not applying in 2025, you're applying a little bit later, that's perfectly fine. This advice pertains to you too. If you don't know who I am, my name is Maggie. I'm a fourth year medical student. Yay, just got upgraded yesterday. I was a professional MCAT tutor before going to med school. I run this channel with me and my brother, John, who will be starting as an intern in June in plastic surgery. But the whole application season is like basically here. So I wanna give you all some tips. And the first thing I'm gonna tell you guys is something that probably you've heard from like everybody who you've asked for advice for about the application process. And it's that it's not about checking boxes. And it's like, yes, you need some research. Yes, you need some volunteering. Yes, you need some shadowing, whatever. Like, I guess what I'm saying is you have to check the boxes, but just checking the boxes is not impressive. So check them all and then dive deep into a few of your experiences. Shadowing is like useless. So don't, don't just be one of those people like, oh, I shadowed 200 hours what can you say about your impact unless you like started some like organization in your undergrad that you know organized um shadowing opportunities for undergrads like that's that's cool that's more of i would say that's more of a leadership opportunity than it was a shadowing thing but like just just shadowing doctors is not impressive to an, a med school admissions committee similarly volunteering for 10 hours is not impressive either so if you're one of the people who's watching this who's not applying this year or like not applying in 2025 that is my main advice to you like take whatever you're doing and like really run with it. So if you want volunteering to be your thing, pick one volunteering opportunity and go do it every week. And make sure it's something that like you can talk about and that you actually enjoy, that you're passionate about, that you know is going to frame the way that you practice medicine, that kind of thing. Like pick a volunteering opportunity, really stick with it. If you're a research buff, like don't just be like a research assistant in a lab for one summer, like everyone does that. I did it, I, I was that girl. But it's way more impactful for you to say that you, of course, like first off there to paper, but even if you didn't, even if you just like presented several times or like we're on several projects or something like that, that's more impactful. And research, I mean, uh, med school admissions committees are going to like that better. If you are president of some club or some organization, like try to actually in however long that you are like on the, the exec for those organizations, like actually try to make tangible changes that you can put on your application. But for the people who are applying this year and you've kind of already done everything and you're just trying to figure out the way to like frame it on your application, listen up. You can't change what you've done at this point, but you can change how you tell your story to make sure that you're getting the maximum impact out of the things that you have done. So on your application, don't say that you volunteered at a hospital front desk. Say that you strengthened communication skills by helping anxious patients navigate hospitals during the COVID era restrictions. So, you know, something like that. Take whatever you did and make it sound better. And I have a little reflection drill for us because you don't need new experiences. You just need to tell your story better. So let's take, take 30 seconds and let's do this reflection drill. Pick one thing that you're already doing. You know, you could be the president of some club. You could be volunteering somewhere. You could be doing some sort of research, whatever. Then answer these three questions. One, what skill did you build? Did you build leadership skills, communication skills, resilience? Number two, who did I impact? So did you just impact your community? Did you impact your peers or your or like your undergrad peers? Did you impact patients, teammates, things like that? And then number three, how did it change you? Did it give you confidence? Did it shift your goals? Did it grow your empathy? And then your answers to those questions are gonna be what you should put on your application. Don't put your title, I mean, you, I guess you're gonna to have to, but like the title or the hours that you worked are not the important part. It's those three things, like what skills did you build? How did it impact you? And who did you impact? When you frame your experiences around those things, that's what's gonna make you stand out more. And you can take anything that you've already done and reflect on it with this drill and make it sound better than it did before. Another thing that I think is important, and this is gonna come through in your personal statement, in your um, most valued experiences, and in your interview, really, is going to be how you frame the things that you've done 
in the larger context of some story. And I talked about this in my video on personal statements, but med schools are sifting through so many applications and so many like experiences that people are doing. And a lot of these experiences and the way that students present them, they just fall short in, in framing why does that matter? So if you can take your experiences in volunteering in a homeless shelter and you can connect it with a story about how passionate you are about serving underserved communities, that's so much better than just saying, I did this for, but I did this for so many hours. It's so much better if you can connect that story for them. Act like the Med School Admissions Committee are lazy POSs. They don't wanna make their own story. They want you to tell it to them. It's better to me if you can take a lot of your experiences and tie them back to a larger story and that that's something that you can reinforce in your personal statement too because realistically every experience that you list should be or I guess should reflect back on the bigger story of why you're going into medicine and yes like I'm telling you guys all of this like stuff and like I know you're probably getting frustrated because I was so frustrated when I was in your shoes I was like I'm 21 years old like I didn't know that I was supposed to be painting the larger picture of my life back when I was 18 and volunteering at this like thing and I'm totally there with you like I get you I'm trying to tell you how to take those experiences that you didn't even know like you might not even know that you wanted to go into medicine when you were doing those experiences but here like in retrospect frame it in a way that pushes some story of you and how you belong in medicine because of these experiences that's how I was I didn't know I wanted to go to med school at first I was just doing stuff and then I eventually had to put it all together and it was entirely frustrating i understand just play the fiddle a little bit longer until you get to med school because once you get into med school you're gonna you know you're gonna go to residency so you got you can start painting that picture early the next tip i think is really relevant because personally i had mostly like i didn't do a whole lot of like volunteering and undergrad i did mostly like leadership stuff like being in organizations and stuff like that if you're one of those people here's how you talk about leadership activities they want to see not that you just were the leader but that you could lead and leave things better than they were when you came in. So again, if you're watching this and you're not applying this year, that this is great advice. Like be in that organization, but make some kind of tangible change that you can actually write down on a piece of paper. Like you didn't just volunteer at this place. Like you, you built this new system of volunteering or you didn't just mentor one student when you were like a junior in college. You built a system that, you know, ensured that mentors kept up with their mentees or something like that. Like take whatever is currently in place and then make it better. And I say this even with like hobbies and stuff. Like you can say, oh, I really like roller skating. That's dope. Like why don't you like organize some roller skating community? If you like playing the guitar, go play the guitar at the hospital for the patients. Like that's cool stuff that you can talk about on the, you know that will relate back to your hobbies and makes you an interesting person like oh yeah that's the guy that plays the guitar at the hospital and then the last thing is letters of recommendation i already made a video on like how to ask for letters of recommendation I would recommend you go give it a watch if you don't have the time the take-home point is tell the letter writers what you need them to say i mean yes like like ideally you can spend a lot of time with your mentors you can you know they can see your growth but realistically i feel like a lot of the times it's just like a professor that you met with a couple times after class or it's like this research mentor who like forgot your name most of the time you were in the lab. Your job when you're asking for a letter of recommendation is to make it easy for your letter writers to say something amazing about you. So why don't you just give them that information and they can, you know, run with it. And then globally, just be cool. Just be a good person. Be someone who's easy to root for. Be someone who is easy to like, you look on the paper and you're like, would I want this person to be my doctor? Hmm, they're being really egotistical when they talk about this thing or another, so maybe not. But if you approach the entire application with a genuine spirit, um, you come across as hardworking and humble, as passionate, coachable, you know, someone with integrity, just those kinds of things, like that should always come across in your writing and when you're in the interview too. And I'll make a video on interviews as well. But if you take nothing else from this video, remember you don't have to cure some obscure disease. You just need to tell a clear, honest story about why you care, how you've grown, and how you're ready to serve. If you want more tips on the med school application journey or MCAT or anything, hit like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.